So hopefully you've mastered working out what the products are when you electrolyze molten ionic compounds. It is pretty straightforward, just look at the name. Now how many of you managed to answer the question about wax on the previous slide? A wax is not an ionic compound so it doesn't conduct electricity when molten and certainly doesn't undergo electrolysis so there are no products at the anode or cathode. I'm sure you all got that. Now electrolysis of aqueous solutions is what we're going to focus on in this little video and if you have a look carefully at that diagram there that's a typical sort of apparatus you might see in a GCSE exam paper um, there might be a little surprise there. If you look carefully you'll see at the positive electrode you've got chlorine given off from sodium chloride. That might be no surprise, or should be no surprise I should say really. But if you look at the other electrode, the negative electrode, you've got hydrogen there from sodium chloride. Where's that hydrogen come from? And why do we get hydrogen? Well we won't explain fully why, but I'll give you a rule to help you explain why hydrogen is formed and not sodium. You'll see we've got another compulsory practical coming up um, to look forward to, but don't worry about that at the moment. We'll do that in the lab as and when we can. So, what ha actually happens when an ionic compound is dissolved in water? Well, the Ionic compound itself splits up, so the ions are floating around. But also, the water molecules break up into H plus ions, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions. Okay, my pants are slightly on fire here because there's a little bit more to it than this, but this is all we need to know for GCSE. If you do IB chemistry, um, you would do that in the final term before the exams, so it shows you just how complicated the, the actual picture is. So, if I take sodium chloride as my example, then there are four different ions actually floating around in the solution. There are two from the sodium chloride, Na plus and Cl minus, and there are two from the water, H plus and OH minus. Both these positive ions will be attracted to the negative electrode. Both these negative ions will be attracted to the negative electrode, uh, to the sorry, positive electrode. Remember, opposites attract. But we need to work out which will be discharged, which will be converted into neutral atoms or molecules. So, how do we know? Well, there are some simple rules to learn, and they need to be learned. They're not too tricky to learn, but so many people forget them. And it's linked to the reactivity series. Hydrogen is produced at the cathode if the metal in the compound is more reactive than hydrogen. Okay, so if something is above hydrogen in the reactivity series, then hydrogen is formed at the cathode. Link that back to the diagram you saw at the start. That had hydrogen formed at the cathode because sodium is more reactive than hydrogen. Now if it's a less reactive element, so something like copper for example, then, so from copper sulfate, copper is less reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series, so copper would be formed at the cathode from the copper ions. At the anode, we don't need to remember any reactivity series. All we need to remember is that you always get oxygen unless the solution is a chloride, bromide or iodide. In general, a halide ion. And if you've got a chloride, chlorine will be produced. If you've got bromide, a bromide, bromine will be produced. And if you've got an iodide, iodine will be produced. And that's all there is to it at the anode. What I want you to do is pop onto the next slide and predict 
what will be formed in the table. Okay, the table is a little bit more complex than that. I'll click onto it now. But com basically, complete the table. Look carefully at the states. Okay, not all of them are solutions. When you've completed it in your notes or wherever, then you can pop onto the presentation and see whether you've got the answers correct or not. If you didn't get them correct, look back at those rules. Okay, those rules always apply. And if you follow those rules, you cannot possibly go wrong. Hmm. Okay, let's take a closer look at what actually happens at each electrode. If you can remember the animation, that gave you quite a good look at what goes on. But let's take another look. Using molten sodium chloride as an example, what happens at the cathode? What happens to the sodium ions? Well, we should know that the sodium ions become sodium atoms. Na plus from sodium chloride becomes Na. Nah. Think about the electron arrangement of Na plus and Na. OK, pause the video, write them down. You did pause that video, didn't you? You're not just taking what I'm saying. Na is 2, 8, with a little plus outside brackets. And sodium itself is just Na. So to get from Na plus to Na, we need to add one more electron. And so we simply write it like that. that Little minus can be written as a subscript, um, but it goes very small if I do that on this font, so I've just left it there. So sodium has to gain one electron to, f oh, sorry, sodium ions have to gain one electron to form sodium atoms. And if you think similarly about other substances like Mg2 plus going to Mg, Mg2 plus is 28 plus, but Mg is 282. You'll work out that you need to add two electrons. Now remember, it's gain of electrons, and that's reduction occurring at the cathode. Useful rule of thumb, the number of electrons you need to add is exactly equal to the charge here. Remember you don't put a 1 in front like in maths, you don't put 1x, you just write x. It's the same here. There is a 1 there, imaginary 1 there, and there's an imaginary 1 there. If this is 2+, plus, you need 2 electrons. If this is 3+, plus, you need 3 electrons. Okay, and the 3 goes in front of there, 2 goes in front of there, not added to the charge of the electron. An electron is just E-. minus. You can't have E with three minuses or whatever. That's just a new particle that nobody's discovered yet. There we are, there's your challenge. Discover an electron or a particle with a three minus charge. Yeah, good luck with that. So now let's take a look at what happens at the anode in a little bit more detail. What happens to the chloride ions? Well, we should know that chloride ions become chlorine molecules. So we need to balance the atoms on each side. We need two chloride ions to get a chlorine molecule. And again, if you think about the electron arrangements, chlorine is 287 and a chloride ion is 288. Anything else to add to the equation? Yes, of course. There are electrons again. And each chloride ion has to lose one electron to become a chlorine atom. Remember, those chlorine atoms then pair up to form these molecules. So we need a total of two electrons on this side. That makes a two minus charge on this side and two times one minus two minus charge on that side of the equation as well. 
This is the preferred way of writing these equations for our exam board. You will see in some places that they put minus 2e minus on this side of the equation. That's okay, but this is what's preferred and you, what you are more likely to see on our exam board's exam papers. So if you have to complete an equation of this type, the electrons are very likely to be on that side. So it's plus. So these chloride ions have lost two electrons. Okay, there's the alternative version. So we get oxidation here. Okay, what I want you to try now is to complete the following electrode equations. You've had a little bit of practice at this on the worksheets that you've been set already, but not a huge amount. There's the list for you to complete. Good luck with that last one. The first complete an completed answer sent to me can claim a house point. So that is all the theory that you need to know now for electrolysis. Obviously, take your time to write some notes and review everything. There's no point in rushing through it. But when you've completed all your notes and so on, what I want you to do is go through these little statements here, read them carefully, and then decide whether each one is true or false. If it is false, rewrite the statement with a corrected version. Okay, that should keep you quiet, writing those notes, going through that table and so on for at least a lesson. Uh, I will pop some more on for a later lesson just to keep you busy. Uh, there'll be a worksheet or maybe two. So that's it. That's the end of the theory for the whole of this topic. Obviously, we'll spend a bit of time reviewing it when we're all back in together again after Christmas.